Hey guys, today we're chatting to Legends of the Past, which is a 3D multiplayer mobile game featuring reimagined historical legends. You'll take part in epic battles set through history where past, present and future collide, all while having the potential to earn you rewards while playing. Thank you for joining. Basil, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Could you give us a brief introduction of who you are and what you're building in blockchain currently? Uh, so my name is uh, Basil. I've been in the gaming industry for the last uh, six years and in the Web3 industry for the last two and a half, three years uh, nowadays. And so we started our gaming studio by creating an educational mobile game to help a French student in middle school to learn about World War I. So it was like a, a subway surfer kind of gameplay where you were like running in the trenches of World War I and at checkpoints, you were uh, asking uh, questions by a general. And if you answer correctly, he was rewarding you with ammunition and rifles that helped you survive throughout the war. So we, we worked with um, French middle school that used our game in class. And a little bit more than, more than two years ago uh, now, we started another concept of a new game, but we wanted to create something for the public, the audience, and not being niche in the education uh, gaming you know, space. And so that's why we started to envision Legend of the Past, a game based on historical characters, but appealing for everyone. And while doing it, we also uh, started to implement and to design a way and to integrate uh, some blockchain uh, um, uh, inside of the game and on top of it as well to also create an experience driven by our community. So that's when the process of Legend of the Past started on Hedera. Excellent. And that sounds really interesting, the educational war game you started out with. For anyone that doesn't know, what is Legends of the Past and what's your vision? So Legend of the Past, it's a, it's a first mobile game, although we want to develop on Steam and switch down the road, but we're starting mobile. A mobile game, a PvP brawler kind of game, where you'll be battling between the, the people that shaped history. So you can imagine uh, Cleopatra, Cleopatra, Frida Kahlo, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Martin Luther King, people that uh, made, made history in a significant manner. Well, those historical characters are battling inside Legion of the Past together in procedurally generated arenas. So arenas that move, uh, that are different on every on every session. And those arenas are also related to a special theme. So you can you'll be playing in ancient arenas, like the pirate eras, or like very like antique or uh, uh, antique Greek style uh, arena, but also modern and even futuristic arenas as the Kawaii Blade Runner era that is very appealing because legend of the past it's more than a game it's, it's a journey through space time and history with those historical characters and all of them have what we call a glitch our cleo is doing muay thai our frido if our frida is doing some magic paintball as a way for us to integrate in terms of game design so that those characters are playable classes and archetype of traditional brawler uh, uh, mobile games, but also creating also uh, something artistic so that everyone all around the world can identify into these characters because they want to, to yeah, they, they identify themselves in the about culture. So it's a, a mobile game built on Hedera that also offer a Web3 experience uh, while we are building and also when the game is live. So we have NFTs within the, within the game with our main legends. And we are working, so we've been working hard. We have a great team of uh, veterans in the gaming industry who have worked on multiple uh, gaming successes and gaming hits in the mobile, but also in the traditional gaming uh, space. <clears throat> and with the great, this great team, we also have great token advisor helping us on the building a sustainable reward loop as a way that will drive value for our NFT players, but also uh, incentivizing our Web2 players to enter this uh, amazing experience offered by uh, Hedera within our game. Thank you very much for that in-depth description. And can you talk about the process and journey of deciding to build on the Hedera network? Um, so at first, we started to look into Hedera for the for the technology because, it, as everyone knows, it's well super fast, super scalable, and at, uh, the tr transaction fees are very low and fixed. So, which is pretty much all the requirements needed to build a game that will have a lot of transactions and to attract players that will also trade their assets, but at, at you know like at, at their real price and not having a huge transaction rate 
that you could find you know, elsewhere. So we are drawn by the technology. And then progressively, I think the, the, the community is what made us like true, true like age barbarian because we were like very welcomed since the beginning, first by uh, other projects at the beginning, at the core, we easily like reach out to like the main Edera project, whether it be like other games, but also like Hashpack, Wallet Solutions or Launchpads, all of them all together. And so we had a lot of support for other builders that helped us at the beginning while we grow. And afterwards, the next step was also to engage and to create our own community of people that are helping us build, uh, build Legion of the Past in terms of first by investing in the game through our NFTs, but also by also uh, discussing with us so we are now I also consider our like early supporters as also as advisor in a way because i'm often discussing with with them either for the uh, in, in regards to the, the the direction and production of the game we are we are building but also for strategic discussions this is what made us uh, yeah truly believe on hedera and uh, i think it's also yeah one of the best 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 uh, place to to build games for the tech and the support of the of the community is uh, is amazing. And it's always refreshing to hear builders listening to their community and considering them as as voices going forward. That's really nice to hear. Could you elaborate on Cleopatra, the Infinity Jar, and their in-game utility? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, well, first, the Infinity Jar is our most like valuable NFTs in the, the core of the project, like a founder pass, people that hold the Infinity Jar will have like many, uh, many uh, rewards in regards to like the Web3, but also for in-game reasons. In regards to Web3, they have access to like receiving heaven keys, so they have access to all of our uh, NFT cell. They can, uh, they can participate early uh, uh, for, with the Jar, but also the, the, the Jar provides also a future airdrops and also um, um, secure spots for the private cell of our LOP token when it's the right right moment for us uh, to launch. So that will be rewarding since the beginning. The Jar bearers are the ones who are supporting the NFT uh, the project since the beginning. So it's normal that we'll also reward them when the time comes with, with our token you know, as well. Now, moving on to the legend NFTs, all the, those assets are the assets, the true assets of, of the game. We are de uh, designing tokenomics that is driven, that is well, sustainable, that can last for, for years and years, and also that provide value both to our Web2 and Web3 audience. So how do we do that? Our legend NFT have multiple utility. So you have in-game utility. If you have a Clio, you'll have like social NFTs. You'll have like unique skins and cosmetics uh, inside the game that you can afterwards trade to other if you want. But that's only for the owner of of, uh, of Clio. They also receive some uh, gameplay uh, gameplay utility that they can also like trade to other players who want have to who want to have access to those gameplay utility uh, uh, within the game. But more than that. Uh, more than in-game utility, our legend NFTs also provide governance uh, within our uh, legend committees because we've built multiple committees for each of our legends. And this is how we are creating uh, mechanisms that offer long-term value to our Web3 audience because they'll, participate, they'll have access to weekly tournaments. And during those tournaments, they will elect some champions and those champions will battle against each other at an esport level, like a skillful player of the game. And then when a Clio, a Clio champion wins a tournament, all of the members of the Clio committee will earn part of the rewards for these events. Think of it as like shareholder of an esport team. Excellent. And this is, I was going to touch on that, the tournaments. And you're launching a DAO. And there's mechanics to these tournaments um, to earn HBAR. Without trying to get too complicated, how would that work for people just joining? It, to explain it to someone from Web2. Yeah. So basically, being a member of our legend committee gives you access to our tournament. And so it's quite simple. If you have an NFT of Clio, you, are, you have a seat inside the Clio committee. And so once a week, you can go on the Clio committee website. There, well... You'll, you'll connect through Ashpack, so you, ha you can have access only to Clio holders. Then you will elect amongst all of the other Clio committee one champion for the week. So each committee elects one champion. Then we have the weekly tournament. So the champions battle against each other in our game, but every Saturday at 5 p.m. And the beauty of it is that so this event is really exclusive to our NFT holders in terms of rewards and also participation. But what we are doing is our Web2 play players will be spectators of those events. 
can ask me why would they watch those events if they can earn and can participate. But the thing is, they will receive some in-game rewards as gems or something that have value within the game that could be like typically purchased through like an in in-app purchase uh, inside of the game. And so by offering something to them that have uh, value inside of the game, we are catering a strong audience of spectators, weekly spectators of these tournaments. And therefore, we are leveraging this audience to brands that will, that are interested by Web2, Web3 audiences. And so then this is how we are implementing a sustainable reward loop, because we'll not only reward during those events with our LOP token or our age bar, you know, treasury, because otherwise it will not sustainable. We also want to embark brands that want to target the, these qualified audience, brands that, that will be sponsoring those events with an, a banner with their logo during the week and explaining during the event, also having their logo inside of the arena and a brief explanation and like, you know, a project placement in a way, just like we're not reinventing the world. This is basically what's, what's being uh, happening in traditional esports tournament where you see like Microsoft or Dell that are sponsoring the cash prize of the, the League of Legends, for instance, uh, tournament. Well, we are doing the same, but by offering a Web 2, Web 3 audience to brands that want to target these kind of audiences. When can we get our hands on the game and start playing it? Yeah, uh, so that's why we are now at a well turning point in our company because we're like accelerating the production and we are now, we, we recently released our second legend, Frida, and that was done on purpose so that we can progressively embark and form the, the, the whole Frida committee so that we can have two committee, Frida and Clio. And those members are the ones who will have access to the alpha because we are now preparing for the release of the alpha for Clio and, uh, for Clio and Frida holders. Perfect. And is there anything you'd like to add that we haven't touched on for the viewers? We are preparing to open some seats very exclusive to form the member of the, well, other members into the, the, the Frida, of the Frida com uh, committee. So you can pay attention to what's happening. And also to summarize, yeah, I can also speak about the, the gameplay of Legend of the Past. Uh, we can show you this video of uh, Clio that is, like you can see her moving around and how she behaves in terms of uh, inside the game Legend of the Past. And on this second video, we can now show you uh, Frida, how she's on her own, uh, using her paintball gun and what are her ability. Those elements are very uh, exclusive. And so you can have an idea of the whole concept, but we are also very confidential in terms of uh, production and what we can reveal. But we are quite excited to uh, actually have uh, something that will be playable soon for our holders. Excellent. And that does sound exciting. And for anyone watching that wants to go and learn more or get involved, where would you send them? Well, you, you can follow the project on, on Twitter or X. Or, or even better, enter our Discord where you have access to all of the information and even some alpha news because there are some game elements that we are only revealing inside Discord and not publicly on Twitter. Excellent. Basil, thank you very much for joining us today and thank you for everything you've shared. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, none of this is financial advice.